Okay, so um, before we start this project, I'm going to give you a little preview of six, section 6.3 because we haven't gotten to that yet. And it has to do with um, solving proportions by using cross products. So we've talked about ratios. We've talked about a ratio like 2 to 3. And um, let me start by showing you why cross products work. We all know that 2 to 3 is equal to 4 to 6, mostly because usually if we have 4 to 6, we would reduce it to 2 to 3. But notice that when you have a proportion that's equal, 2 times 6 is equal to 3 times 4. If these two proportions are equal, that is always true. The cross products are also equal. And so what's going to happen is you're going to have a situation where you have two ratios set equal to each other. That's called a proportion. So I have two ratios set equal to another. And in this case, I don't know one of the numbers. Um, but because I know that these are equal, I know that this times this is going to be equal to this times this. And 16 times 45 is 720. And now, of course, we know how to solve this. This is a one-step equation. The variable is x. They're multiplying by 10, so you need to divide by 10 and you end up with 72. You can plug it back in to make sure it makes sense. Um, 16 is to 72 as 10 is to 45. That sounds about right. If you had something less than 16, you know that would be a problem. So now that you know, given any proportion, you can use, some people call this the butterfly method because it kind of looks like a butterfly. You can multiply um, the means times the extremes. It's just literally the things that are kitty corner from each other. So 10 times x is equal to 16 times 45. All right, the other thing I want to review is to review measuring to the nearest quarter inch. Measure to nearest one fourth of an inch. So I'm going to start by just drawing a part of a ruler and then I'll pull the ruler over here. If this is 0 and this is 1, of course halfway between is 1 half and halfway between the 0 to the half is 1 fourth and then halfway between 1 half to 1 is 3 fourths. Okay, so I'm sure you all know that but I want to make sure it's a nice visual where you can see it nice and big. Um, of course we know that 1 fourth is equal to 0.25 and 1 half is equal to 0.5 and 3 fourths is equal to 0.75 or 75 hundredths, 5 tenths, and 25 hundredths. So if that's a review of that, I would like to take a look at a ruler. Now I'm purposely choosing a ruler from my stash of rulers that looks pretty well loved. It's pretty well worn, pretty well loved. And I want to make sure that you can see, and I'm having a problem, I want to make sure that you can see on the plastic rulers, oftentimes the zero is not the edge. The zero is right there. Let me zoom in here. Hopefully I'll remember to zoom out. But I'm just zooming into this one inch. So there's the zero, and that mark is the one. Okay, now even though a lot of this is rubbed off, I kind of know that a half is here, and I kind of know that a quarter is here, and a quarter is here. All right, so this is the zero, this is the one, and then the half, the one-fourth, and the three-fourths. So if you're measuring something, even though, even if you have something way out here, take a look at my five to six inches. It's really rubbed off, but I can guess, is it closest to five and a half? Is it closest to five and a quarter? Or is it closest to five and three-quarters? I'm just going to make that guess. So that's what we mean by rounding to the nearest quarter inch. All right. So here is what you're going to receive. You are going to receive a map. You are going to receive a rubric, which actually we should take a second to look at. You can see that this is a 16-point project because you can get up to four points in each of these categories. Please make sure you put your name on the rubric because when you're all done, you're going to staple this together with the rubric on top. And then you have directions, not only directions, um, very explicit directions, but also with charts to do it as you need them, as you go through. Um, so the first thing you're going to do is you're going to plan a trip. You're going to visit five cities, obviously, um, on the map. First of all, they have to be cities on the map, and there's lots of choices on this map. Um, we don't, they don't have, they don't list Glenview, Illinois, but they do list Chicago, and so we're going to go with that. Now you're going to choose five cities, and then you're going to take your ruler, and you're going to draw lines, hopefully in an order that makes sense. You don't want to go to 
Reno, Nevada, and then up to Fargo, and then down to Albany, and then back over to Phoenix before you go back to Chicago. Hopefully, it'll make you'll, it'll make sense. I will show you the benefit of one of the things that I noticed. This was my first, look at I wrote what not to do. This was my first attempt. I thought I'm going to go from Chicago to Washington, D.C., and I kept going before I noticed because I was going to go from Charleston to Orlando. I love Disney, so I thought Orlando. And I realized I can't go in my car. This is a road trip. I can't go over the water. And so then I looked up here and thought, uh-oh, I already did that there. So I scrapped this one. Of course, this means you can't go to Hawaii. You can't go to Honolulu because this is in an island, and we're, this is a road trip. You can't go to Anchorage, Alaska. These two are pretty much off limits because you would have to cross an ocean, and we can't do that with a car. So what I did do was I decided that I was going to go to these five cities. Um, and literally, I took my ruler, and I connected. Notice these are nice straight lines. You want to make sure you're connecting the dot next to the word, not the middle of the word. So there was a dot next to Louisville, Kentucky. And of course, Washington, D.C. is our capital, so there's a big thing here. Now, be careful. There were some people who thought Washington was the state of Washington. Washington if you want to go to Washington, D.C., that's over here. Spokane, Washington, or Seattle, Washington, way over here. All right, so you're going to try not to go over any water. You're going to try to do it in an order that makes sense. And um, you can decide if you want to fill in the table first or the map first. That's totally up to you. So literally, the first step is just choosing your five cities. Make sure you put the state there, too. Your five cities with a start in Chicago and an end in S Chicago. Then what you're going to do is kind of transfer that information, and you're going to figure out the distance from Chicago to Louisville, from Louisville to Washington, D.C., or wherever it is you're going. So that's what I'd like to do with you now, again, rounding to the nearest quarter inch. If I take a look at Chicago to Louisville, again, I'm not going to use the edge. Should I zoom in again? Let's zoom in again. I'm not going to use the edge of my ruler. I'm going to use this little mark where that is zero. And so this, if I, it's, it's not quite one inch because that's the one and that's the mark where one inch is. It's not quite one inch, but I think I'm going to round it to be one inch. And so what I would do, I measure and I write down one inch. Again, we're rounding. If you want, you could even do that rounding symbol. Whoops. So approximately one inch. Then we're going to go from Louisville to Washington, D.C. And we're going to measure that one. I'm zoomed in, so I have to make sure you can see it. I'm going to use the zero. All right, that's pretty darn close to one and a half inches. And so I'm going to go ahead and do approximately one and a half inches. And I'm going to keep filling these in. Um, I think I, let's do one big one. So I'm going to do my last one with you just so you can get an idea of some bigger ones. And, and please, when you choose your cities, try to do that. Notice I have some small distances and some longer distances. So on my last leg here, actually my last leg would be from Portland to Chicago. I'm going to go from zero. This is the five, and so this is pretty close to um, five and a half. I think because I didn't have anything that was a quarter, I went with five and a quarter. Um, and this one is really close to three and a half. There's the three, there's three and a half, really, really close to three and a half, but you're rounding. All right, so once you have that all filled in, which I didn't fill in, then you're going to take this other sheet of paper. This is your last step, and you're actually going to fill in. All right, so I want to go from Chicago to Louisville. And I wrote down, because it says, and the inches, one inch. Now, this is going to be the easiest one to do, because one inch, if you look at the map, I forgot to show you that, if you look at the map, one inch is 300 miles. Maybe not exactly, but it sure is pretty close, from the zero to the one. So one inch is 300 miles, and that's the ratio we're going to use every time. We're going to write one inch is to 300 miles as... One inch, in this case, in my case, yours might not be one inch, is to, I don't know, 
And we're going to use those cross products. So 1 times x is equal to 1 times 300. And so I have x is 300. That's my work. And finally, distance in miles. It's just whatever you come up with, it's always going to be miles. So my first leg of my trip is 300 miles. When I go from Louisville, let's do a harder one. Louisville to Washington, D.C. And I came up with one and a half inches. And it's OK to use decimals. This is one of the few times you can have a decimal in a, in a fraction, because actually it's a ratio. So one inch is to 300 miles, as 1.5 inches is to, I don't know. And so this is going to be 1 times x, butterfly method, cross products, is equal to 1.5 times 300. And so I'm going to get x equals 450. Now these are all going to be nice and easy equations to do because our ratio is already a unit rate. It's already to 1 inch. So every time you're going to get 1x, 1x, every time. And so that all you have to do then is just multiply here. All right. Through the magic of TV, I have my project that I did. And so I finished all my um, measurements. I finished all my distances and step six says find the total distance traveled. So I just literally had to add that last column and my road trip is going to be 5,250 miles. When you're all done, take all your pieces and staple it with the rubric on top. Of course you're going to put your name and then you can hand it in. Alright, thank you.